Hey, this is Eric for Bartos Media, and today I have a review of the Sentrance R4 field recorder, mobile mixer, and mobile recording interface. If you're someone that needs to record a lot of audio on the go, requires a rock solid piece of equipment, and something that's really not that much bigger than an iPhone 11 Pro Max, you might want to stick around and see what this has to offer. One real quick thing before we get started, I would like to mention that this product was sent to me direct from Sentrance as a review unit. However, this will not change my opinion in any way on the product, and I will always do my best to give you the most accurate review so you can make an informed purchase. Well, here it is. This little unit here is the R4 recorder. This particular model is the R4B bundled with XY mics that are in fact, removable to reveal two combo XLR quarter inch jacks right here on the top. Unlike any other device in this particular price point, this one has all metal construction, really high quality dual stage Jasmine audio preamps, and a DA that really blows the competition out of the water. And with this device, you can record direct to an SD card or to a mobile device or even your computer if you really want. Uh, you can record to an iPad, an iPhone, or an Android phone, all with this little device. And if you don't really want to do that, you have the ability to use the built-in SD card on a couple of the models as well. There are three different models of this recorder available. The R4 at $349, the R4R at $479, and the R4B at $549 at the time of recording this video. And in addition to the three always available units, at the time I was recording this video during the global band pandemic, there uh, is an additional option available, the R4S, starting at $179. And this unit just doesn't have the internal power option uh, or an SD card option. It's basically designed to be used as a studio style interface. Uh, and I've talked to the folks at Sentrance and this device may not be around for very long. So if that sounds like something you're looking for, I would definitely hop on that deal right now. The biggest difference between the units that are available is the option to have an SD card recorder and an interface, not just an interface. Uh, the R4 does not have an SD card, while the R4R and the R4B both have SD card slots. And the only difference between the R4R and the R4B is the included set of Sentrance XY microphones that plug directly into the top of the unit, giving you two configurations to use these microphones in. And because of the way that they're designed and built, and the fact that they just plug right into the unit, this is a really great option for people who are recording on the go and need something along the lines of the Zoom series, the H4, the H6, anything that allows you to just have a built-in microphone. And uh, like you saw in the beginning of this video, they were in the XY position, and you can just plug them in reverse, and now you have a perfect little podcasting setup because of the uh, quarter 20 screw on the bottom of this unit. Just pop it on a stand, now you can have your host on one side, your guest on the other, and you can have a little podcast studio right there wherever you need it with, uh, without really any kind of setup. You just pop the SD card in and hit record and you're good to go. As I was saying earlier in the video, the SD card option allows you to have uh, the option to record directly to the memory card and to a phone or computer at the same time. And that is where this device really shines. The addition of the SD card reader, like I was saying, uh, allows you to just throw this in your bag with nothing else uh, but the microphones or a microphone, whatever you may be using, and you can pull it out, plug it in, hit record, and you're good to go. That's it. Nothing else. No need to fiddle with apps, cables, anything. Uh, and at the touch of a button, you're recording a podcast, you're recording uh, a broadcast, you're recording anything that you want. Now, if you do want to use this as an interface and an SD card recorder, that's perfectly okay too. That gives you the ability to uh, back your recordings up as you're recording them, so no need to copy files. Or maybe you need to have an archived version of it and you want to quickly get it up to the internet. Then you can record it to the SD card and you can record it to the phone at the same time. The next most interesting feature I've come across on this unit that I haven't seen on any other recorder ever is the buttons. 
it sounds a little funny, but yeah, the, the buttons on this unit are great, and that's really all that there is on this unit. There's no touch screens, there's no menus, nothing. Just physical switches and buttons to control the whole unit, and it makes for an awesome user experience. Uh, yeah, there are some downsides to not having a screen. For example, during playback, you don't know exactly which track you're listening to, and during record, you don't really have an indication of how much space is left on your SD card except for a few LEDs on the bottom. Uh, however, that, that can be easily solved by using the maximum supported size SD card of 256 gigs and at the fixed recording format of 28-bit 48 kilohertz per second WAV files, this should give you around 245 hours of record time, which is way more time than anyone should be going without reading from their card anyways. All of the models except for the R4S have a built-in rechargeable battery that will give you around 8 hours of record time. However, this setting will vary based on phantom power settings, uh, which mic you use, if you're recording to the SD card, or if you're recording into the app. Now, in addition to the built-in battery, all models can power the recorder externally and record at the same time, allowing for extended record time limited only to the uh, limits of your SD card or your device that you're recording onto. Now, this device is interesting in the way that it goes about powering the device for uh, externally powered recording. Most devices have a single USB port that allow you to power the unit and get data from the unit or they'll have a separate power adapter. This unit, it's different, but I like it now that I understand how it's set up and why it's done this way. It has two micro USB ports on the bottom here. One of them is the data port and one of them is the power port. Now this totally makes sense on things like the iPhone adapter because you can't send power back down the adapter. You have to have another way of powering the device while it's being used on the iPhone. Now, it would have been nice to see the option to also power the device from the data port, seeing as when you're using it on a computer, having two USB ports is a little bit clunky. Before we get into some uh, audio samples, let's talk tech specs for a moment. As a USB interface, this has the ability to record 16 or 24-bit audio at 192 kilobits per second. The low noise Jasmine technology preamps offer gain ranging from plus 10 dB to plus 53 dB. Each channel has an individually selectable high pass filter at 120 Hz with a 6 dB per octave roll off. The two output jacks on the top are balanced 3.5mm jacks, allowing you to plug this into any kind of device that supports balanced audio uh, with the correct adapters. Think uh, powered speakers, or your monitors on your desk, or any kind of uh, mixer or any external, whatever you have that you want to plug your audio into. In addition to the standard outputs, there is an aux output designed to pass audio from the interface directly to the input of a camera or maybe another recorder or some other uh, device that needs to have a feed of the audio. This is great for uh, people in video who like to use better preamps than what are built into the cameras uh, and be able to record on the camera to have a backup audio recording uh, in addition to the recording that is done on the interface. Now before I get into the last features of the R4, let's take a listen to some audio samples. I'd recommend uh, you listening on some good headphones or reference monitors to really get a feeling of how the R4 sounds. Now, I'll cover a little bit of my thoughts in the end of the video, but I'd just like you to listen and think about how things sound and just take it for what you can on YouTube and being compressed and uploaded and downloaded and played back on your computer. Now, Sentrance does have a great section of sample audio on their website for this recorder, and I would definitely recommend you go take a look at that. Uh, the link is down in the description below, and there's a whole set of different samples with male and female voices and instruments and all sorts of different things that you can listen to to really get a feel of how this recorder sounds but I'm just gonna compare it today to my recorder, which is the Tascam DR60D Mark II with my Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone. Currently, I've been using that setup to record the entire video. Now I'm gonna switch over to using the Sentrance R4. 
This is the Sentrance R4 recorder with the Rode NTG2 shotgun microphone that I've been using to record this entire video. Uh, all I did was take the XLR cable and unplug it from my task cam over there and plug it straight in to the Sentrance R4. And this is essentially the same way it was set up, just swapping out the recorder. I had to do some minor level adjustments in the clips and posts to make them all level, but Basically, all you're hearing is the difference between the two recorders. So hopefully this kind of gives you an idea of how the recorder sounds, and then we're gonna switch over to using the Tascam recorder with the Sentrance XY microphone. Just one, just so we can get a baseline of how things sound. One thing I did notice about these microphones is that they are super directional, so be ready for a slight difference in how I sound just because they're not really meant for this particular type of setup and I'll go over that a little bit more once we get that microphone set up. All right, now I've switched over to using the Tascam with one of the Sentrance XY microphones. It's in about the same location as my Rode shotgun is. It's kind of right up here, but it's a little bit lower and a little bit further back just because of the way I have these microphones mounted. Um, the one thing I did notice about this microphone as compared to, uh, say, the shotgun or maybe a, a Sure microphone is that it is super directional, which is actually really great for something like an XY pair because now you have really great stereo separation between the two microphones and it really lets you get your left and right separate from each other. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to using the Sentrance recorder with the Sentrance microphone and let's take a listen. All right, this is again the Sentrance recorder with the Sentrance microphone. It's just one of them um, put pretty much right where my, my uh, road was again. Um, the only difference between this setup is the recorder itself. I've just done a few level adjustments on both recorders in order to make up for the difference in the microphone. As I was saying in the last clip, this is a very directional microphone, so it's um, very great for XY. And Hopefully you can tell a difference between the recorder at this point and the microphone. And we're going to go ahead and switch back over to using the Tascam for the rest of this video back with my Rode NTG2 just so that we can, you know, keep things accurate and not have to go through a bunch of different audio files. But for now, I hope this lets you kind of get a feeling of the difference between the microphones and the recorder. And hopefully you can tell that there's actually quite a difference between uh, something like that lower end Tascam and this fairly high-end, yet not high-end priced, uh, little recorder here. How do you think it sounds? Maybe we'll talk a little bit about how it sounds at the end of the video, but I like to just let you make a decision on how it sounds. We can go into great detail about how devices sound, and I can give my opinion on how things sound, and for some things I know that's important, but for this instance, I'm gonna leave it up to you. How do you think it sounds? Well, leave a comment below with how you think these two recorders stand up to each other, because Realistically, the Sentrance recorder should be in between like the zoom levels and the sound devices level. So it should be sitting somewhere right in between those recorders. So we should be getting fairly good quality. From my tests, I think it's pretty much at the higher end of that, but I'll let you guys decide. So this recorder has one more trick up its sleeve. It's also a super tiny mobile mixer. It has a separate stereo aux input with a separate volume control, but unfortunately when you're recording with this input, it does get mixed into and recorded into the same stereo track as your microphone inputs. But this could be super useful for quick on the go run and gun podcasting to throw in background music or play back a clip from your laptop or whatever it might be. I could also see this being really useful for broadcasters at events that need to mix in their microphone with some kind of audio player and maybe send it back to the studio with an app like Lucy Live or Comrex Field Tap. Now I haven't tested this with either of those two apps, but I would love to hear in the comments if anyone has this interface and has successfully done that because I think that is a super great use case for this interface slash mixer. It also lets you record it right to an SD card so you have a backup of your audio as well, which is really awesome. Now to use this device with your phone, you'll need an adapter. Uh, it does work with both Android and iPhones, which is amazing, uh, but the adapters that are required will obviously be different. 
For iPhones, you'll need something like this little guy. This is the uh, Apple camera adapter. Now this one is uh, actually a knockoff from Amazon for about $15. It's just the, the lightning port to camera adapter. And uh, it's been working great, uh, even with the, the knockoff. To use this adapter, it's super simple. You just take your phone out, you plug it right in, you get your micro USB cable, you are ready to just go ahead and select the USB option in GarageBand or your preferred mobile DAW and just record audio to your heart's content. For the Android users, depending on the type of phone you have, you'll either need a USB-C to micro USB on the go cable or a micro USB on the go cable just to get that audio into your phone. To ramp things up, I really like this little unit. It has the power of a much larger and much more expensive unit with a ton of features packed into a super tiny case that really is similar in size to an iPhone. Well, this is the iPhone 11 Pro Max and this is the Sentrance. And the best thing about this is you don't have to worry about throwing this into your bag. It's got all metal construction. None of the switches are uh, available to be broken. The knobs are very low profile, the buttons are also low profile, so you don't have to worry about anything happening to it. Sure, it might get scuffed up if you just throw it in there, but that's what a field recorder is meant to do. During my time with the R4, I used it as an interface to bring audio in for streaming video, tested it out on a quick podcast recording, and even recorded a little bit of guitar and vocals to it. I was really impressed with how clean and clear the audio was. It sounded like they came from something that was at least twice the size and twice the price, even recording directly to the SD card. And when you bring it into your computer, using that 24-bit, 192 kilohertz per second audio, you'll never know the difference between this little guy and something much more expensive like a Pro Tools HD rig. I, you might notice, but you get the idea. If you're looking for something to throw in your bag and just use as a field recorder, or need an interface that you can use at your desk that doesn't have too many features, but actually packs a lot of punch, you might want to consider the Sentrance R4 for your next interface or field recorder. So for more information, check out the link in the description to the Sentrance website where you can see all the current pricing of the units and take a listen to all the audio samples that I mentioned earlier in this video. One real quick thing before we wrap up, I just wanted to thank Broadcasters General Store for helping me get this unit for review and Sentrance for letting me spend so much hands-on time with this recorder. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button below. If not, you can go ahead and use the thumbs down as well. I'll also be starting to get more reviews up soon, so please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss any of my new reviews. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.